guys, it's LJ here. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me if you are here for the first time. Um, please like and subscribe if you do enjoy this video. I do a lot of resin based projects but also some paper craft and home decor. Bit of everything really. So I'm going to do some um, resin shakers today. So I'm mixing up my resin. I'm using uh, Resin 8's one to one resin. I love working with this resin. It is so so easy. Um, you can see a lot of bubbles in this mix. Um, because I'm using mica powders, I was not as careful with my mixing. So there will be some f a few micro bubbles, but you won't see them because the uh, mica powders are opaque. So I've mixed up my resin. Um, make sure when you do that you scrape the sides of your cup, the base, everything else. These cups are brilliant. They're large plastic cups and when I'm finished and the resin in the cup has dried overnight, I can just pop it all out. Lovely. Reusable. Good for the environment. And it's like peeling off PVA glue. It's brilliant. It's so much fun. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I am a child. So I've got this cat shaker bum charm, which I absolutely love. And I'm going to use some out of date makeup. I don't wear makeup. I never really wear makeup. Um, I wear it when I'm dancing or when I'm acting or it, fancy dress. But day to day, I don't wear it. So I got bought this makeup kit as a Christmas present and it has lived in the re-gift box for years. Um, but then I thought actually I can use it in my resin because you can use powdered pigments. So rather than the mica I said at the beginning, I'm actually using these um, makeups, eyeshadows and bits. Now they do actually have the mica in. You can see that they're quite glossy. It was a bit of a struggle to get this out of the box, I tell you. Um, yeah, that, that, that was fiddly. But got it out and then just going to scrape off some of the colours into my small silicon pots. So I've got a sort of a brownie, light brownie colour, then a white-ish, or slightly off-white, um, and then a darker brown. So I've got a whiter, a white, a whiter, <laughs> a white, a lighter brown and a darker brown. Um, and I have to say these work really, really well in resin. I was quite impressed. But I guess it makes sense. They're just powdered pigments aren't they this is what it's for um so i have mixed up the resin um and i'm going to pour it into these smaller cups i did pour it into this cup because i was going to do it all one color and then i changed my mind i wanted to do it in uh, in smaller chunks so before i start just going to let the bubbles rise what you can't see just off screen there we go i've got this little pot and these pots are brilliant because when you mix up uv resin you have to mix up quite a lot in order to get a strong colour um, because of the ratios of having powder, uh, having pigment and re resin. So these pots are fantastic because when you mix up UV resin, you can put it in these pots and just keep it. Because they're opaque, they, they, they don't cure because there's no light getting to them. So this red I've had for about a month in that pot and it's still completely liquid, it's brilliant. So I'm just putting the red in the pores of the cat and because I am me i'm also putting it on the bum because they're bum shakers and i want everyone to see the bum because that's what cats do they walk in and they show you their bum my kitten loves putting her bum in my face it's very annoying so i'm just using i'm not getting out my big lamp i'm just using my little uv torch to um cure those feet so i've just checked that they are quite solid and so now i can put my epoxy resin in so that was done with uv resin and now the rest of the the cat is going to be done with uh, epoxy resin so I've split it into the three which have got the three colors the white white um, <laughs> light brown and the dark brown this is kind of reminiscent of my cat in the three colors but mine is um, white ginger and black and then my kitten is black but she has like six and I mean literally six individual white hairs on her chest is absolutely adorable um <laughs> so yeah so got these three colors and they mix really well with the resin i was quite impressed i was expecting it to be a bit maybe clumpy um sorry my camera decided that it didn't want to work then um but they actually mix really really well so i'm just mixing them in with some toothpicks um and yeah it, it takes a while to mix they don't mix as easily as the mica powders but they did mix in very very well so I'm just going to pour these three colours randomly around um, the cat because I want it to be a sort of jumble of different colours. 
and there goes my camera again i apologize um so i'm literally just doing a blob here a blob there a blob everywhere because the resin has been sitting so obviously i did I mixed it up and then I did the UV feet. So it's a bit thicker, which means it's not going to blend in with each other as much. Um, so, yeah, that was that was quite nice. Now, as you can see, I do have some left over. And um, I'll explain about the leftover in a minute. I also decided, because I can't just do one project, to do this anatomical heart shaker as well, just because... I love it and it arrived while I was doing this project so I was like ah <laughs> I'm gonna mix up some resin and I'm gonna make that one so I've literally done the whole thing just in one red I didn't do multicolor I thought about doing the blue um as well I think on my next one I'll do red and blue to show the uh the, the way it's normally portrayed in science textbooks and things but I just did a red for this because it arrived while I was filming and I wanted to make it but I did pour too much in, so I just had to scoop some out. <laughs> I was a little bit eager with this mould. I was so excited to have it. <laughs> anyway, right, popping the bubbles with my lighter. Now, I lost some footage. I lost the footage of me demoulding the cat and the additional that I made and the heart. My camera just not playing ball at the moment. So I've just added this footage in to show you what I do. So around the edges of the shakers, I put some UV resin. I smooth it out with a toothpick like so. And then I put the acetate on top and cure it. Um, so while that is curing, I'm just going to explain what happened. So you saw when I was making the cat that I had some additional resin left over in those colours. So I thought, seeing as I'm doing the cat bum, I might as well use my other cat shaker. So you will see when we get back to it that I have a cat bum and a cat face in the same colours, um, which just pleased me greatly because I am a child and I thought that was funny. Um, so yes, so this is curing. This is exactly what I did to both cat shakers and the heart. So here we go. You can see them now. So there's the heart. I've added the uh, bits inside. The heart has got some beads and some clay hearts. So just going to smooth that around. I also lost the footage of me doing the same thing to the cat bum and the cat face. But you will see them in a second. So put a top layer on. Pop the bubbles. Done. So here's the heart. Give it a shake. You can see it's got some beads in it. I love that noise. And some clay polymer clay hearts. Dark pink and light pink. Um, and that is an, a dry shaker. I didn't want to put any liquid in that one. And I really like the noise it makes. There we go. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, and then the cat. So we have got the cat face, which is the additional one I did. Both of these have um, baby oil in. So they are wet shakers. So you can see things moving around there slowly. So this one's got some dark and some light bluey balls in. And then here's the best one. Cat butt. Cat butt. Cat butt. Cat butt. Sorry, I am a child. Um, so <laughs> this one's got some larger beads in because it's a deeper mould. Um, and again, some baby oil, so it's quite a slow-moving wet shaker. So yeah, thank you very much for spending time with me today. Have a wonderful time. Keep crafting and I'll see you all soon.